Now I'm a bit of a performance nut and it probably goes way beyond the point of practicality, but as a competitive person, there's nothing I like more than beating my high score. Website performance gives me that opportunity and allows me to scratch that itch. Performance is actually a major reason I chose the block editor and generate blocks anyways. These tools offer amazing results right out of the box and you don't have to spend a bunch of time fighting against the extra bloat other page builders add in by default. We have threads pop open in the group pretty often where people are trying to figure out what's making their website go so slow. So today I thought we'd tackle that topic. We have spent a lot of time in the past talking about performance optimization tools like Perf Matters that actually go in and fix performance problems. But in today's video, we're gonna focus on how to audit and diagnose the issues that are slowing your website down. Now this video would probably perform better on YouTube if I were to call it like the seven amazing tools you have to have to fix your website. But if I'm gonna be honest, there's really just two tools I use when I audit the performance of websites. And in my estimation, the fewer tools we can use, the better. So algorithms be damned, let's get into it. If you're having trouble figuring out what's causing the performance issues on your website, then stick around and let's get started. Now, when it comes to measuring website performance, the main thing I care about is core web vitals. Why? Because that's what Google cares about. Google has spent a ton of time figuring out exactly what kind of performance metrics give users the best experience on a website They've taken that data and they've packed it into their search ranking algorithm. So by passing Core Web Vitals, you're actually killing two birds with one stone. You're giving your visitors a better user experience and you're improving your SEO at the same time. So it's natural to think we need to go test our Core Web Vitals, right? Well, I think before we get into that, we actually need to clear up a little bit of misconception. Now, what you'll see a lot of people do, including myself, when they go to test Core Web Vitals is actually pull up a Lighthouse test. And it's important to understand that the way Lighthouse works and the way Core Web Vitals works is actually a little bit different. Core Web Vitals is actually using real world data. It's actually taking people's individual experience on your website, and that's how they're factoring these things into their search algorithm. Lighthouse tests, on the other hand, work a little bit differently. Instead of using real world data, they're simulating these tests. You'll often hear this as lab data. Now what's gonna make the biggest difference for your website is actually Core Web Vitals. So why even mess with Lighthouse tests at all? Well, there's a couple reasons why this is actually practical. First, if you're developing a brand new website, you don't have any real user data. The website could be set to no index or it could even be living locally on your machine. And with no real world data, we can't actually test core web vitals. But even if you're using a live website with plenty of data, you still are gonna wanna use a lighthouse test. The way Core Web Vitals works is actually a rolling average over the last 28 days. So when you make changes now, you're not gonna really see the results of those changes for days or even weeks down the road. The advantage of using a Lighthouse test is that we can actually see the results of our changes almost instantaneously. Now, you do have to keep in mind that the way Lighthouse tests work and the way Core Web Vitals work is slightly different since Core Web Vitals actually has the benefit of real user data and Lighthouse is only simulating things. But for the most part, these tests are close enough to the real thing that we can make informed decisions anyways. All right, now that we understand the difference between Lighthouse tests and Core Web Vitals, let's go ahead and check out how we can test both of them. There are many ways you can do this, but what I found the easiest to use is the web.dev page speed tool, which can be found at pagespeed.web.dev or by clicking the link down in the description. From there, it's pretty simple. You'll type in your domain, you'll press search, you'll get the results. PageSpeed Insights will give you both the Lighthouse Lab Test plus the Core Web Vital scores, assuming your website has enough traffic. If you don't see the Core Web Vital scores, it's because there was not enough data on the URL you gave them, and instead you're only gonna see the lab or lighthouse testing. Your Core Web Vitals assessment will show you the three primary criteria, that's largest content full paint, first input delay, and cumulative layout shift. It will also give you three additional metrics of first content full paint, interaction to next paint, and time to first byte. You'll be able to see how your site did on a sliding scale for each one of these tests. By default, it's gonna show you the mobile scores, but you can actually open the desktop tab to see your desktop scores. Really though, I rarely do that because if you're doing well on mobile, then by default, you're probably doing great on desktop. Underneath the Core Web Vitals data, you can see the Lighthouse Lab data. Lighthouse also tests other metrics like accessibility, best practices, and SEO. All of those can be useful, but we're gonna skip over them for the purposes of this video. 
Under performance, you'll see the scores of first contentful paint, largest contentful paint, total blocking time, cumulative layout shift, and speed index. Some of these you're probably already familiar with as they were in the Core Web Vitals data, and some of them are slightly different. Now the purposes of this video is just to talk about how to test these things, so we're not going to go into debugging the issues that these tests found. However, it's really important to look under your Lighthouse report where it's going to show you the diagnostics and opportunities. This will give you some quick definitions, show specifics from your website, and link to more detailed information. It can be overwhelming, especially at first, but there's a lot of great information here, and the more you do this, the less you'll need to click on the links and read these extra resources. So that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about inside of PageSpeed Insights and as far as Core Web Vitals. So let's go ahead and move on to our next tool, which is GT Metrics. Now, GT Metrics will also try to simulate Core Web Vitals, but I found it's not as quite as accurate. However, it does give us some really good data that we can't find inside this PageSpeed Insights tool. So let's go ahead and run a test and I'll point out the different kinds of data that I think are actually pretty helpful. When you go to gtmetrics.com, you can simply drop your URL into the search field and hit analyze. However, before you do that, I would recommend first signing up for a free account for two main reasons. First, by signing up for a free account, you can actually change the testing center where the data is coming from. By default, GT Metrics is set to test from Vancouver, Canada, but that can be an ocean away from your server. When you sign up for a free account, you're able to test from Hong Kong, London, Mumbai, San Antonio, Sydney, and Sao Paulo. Testing from a data center closer to where your website's traffic is primarily coming from is going to give you some more relevant information. The second reason I'd recommend a free account is data retention. Your free account will actually save up to two weeks worth of your test, meaning you can run a test now, take a break, and come back to it later. Now sure, you could always run the report again, but each time you run the report, you're going to end up with slightly different results. Not only will having these retained tests solve that, but it'll also save you time and resources not having to run the reports over and over again. I'll go ahead and drop in the adminbar.com and hit Analyze. After a few seconds, we're giving an overwhelming amount of data. Now, like I mentioned, I'm only after a few specific things here, so let me point those out. As I mentioned, I think PageSpeed does a much better job with the Core Web Vital Scores, and since Google doesn't care about a GT metrics grade, neither do I. However, the speed visualization chart just below it and inside the summary tab can be really helpful. Here you can see a visual timeline of when different events on your page load happened, from first byte to fully loaded. This is great if you're trying to narrow down where inside this chain things are slowing down. In this example, you can see the first bit of data came back from my server in just 160 milliseconds. And from the first paint until the site was fully loaded was just another 200 milliseconds. Further down on this page, I want to highlight the page details section, which will show you your total page size along with breaking sizes down by file type and it will show you your total page request, again, broken down by type. These numbers can be really helpful to give you quick insight to potential problems. For example, in most cases, I'm striving to keep my total page size under one megabyte and total requests under 30, which you can see I'm not doing very well on this site. Now, that's all gonna vary from site to site, depending on what you're trying to accomplish and the tools you're using, but that's usually my starting point. Let's go ahead and move to what I think is the most useful part of the GT metrics report, and that's the waterfall chart. While this may look intimidating, it's actually quite simple. What you're seeing here from left to right is a timeline of your website loading. On the other axis is each request. You can see here at the bottom, I have 48 requests on this page, and this chart lists each one of them out individually. We can see the size of each request, plus how long it took to actually load. Not only that, we can dive in deeper and see how long it takes to look up the DNS, request the information from the server, and how long it takes our server to send that information back. I mean, welcome to performance nerd heaven. As much as it's killed me, I've actually left one issue on my website here for you to see so I could demonstrate how this information might be helpful. We can see this one resource that took 438 milliseconds to complete. And because it's in red, I know it actually canceled out and never finished. This bar being so long on the timeline alerts me to a potential issue. I can go ahead and click on this plus icon, which will open up the accordion. Each one of these requests has more information inside. 
Here, I actually find out this is a font from a plugin that's not loading. If I can fix this issue, then I know I can save some significant loading time. You can, of course, go through each of these requests one by one, but I find it's rare that I actually do that. Instead, I'm just looking for outliers to identify any potential issues. This report doesn't give you all the helpful definitions and links to articles like Lighthouse does, but with a little digging, you can typically figure out what your issues are. Across the top of the waterfall chart, you can filter this down to different request types like JavaScript, CSS, images, video, and fonts, which can also come in handy. When auditing sites, I'll often find that it's poor server response times or broken resources like my font here that were major culprits of poor scores. And those things are a whole lot easier to find here inside GT Metrics than they are inside PageSpeed Insights. Of course, testing all these problems is actually the easy part. Then comes the chore of trying to fix everything. Now we have tackled this conversation quite a bit in the past with Brian from Perf Matters, and I'll make sure to link all those videos down in the description below. And to be honest, we could even go a lot deeper into testing and auditing the performance of websites. But as someone who's gone down that rabbit hole before, I promise you there's a point of diminishing returns and really anything past what I showed you today really goes beyond practicality in most use cases. What you learned today is applicable for just about any site and can get the vast majority of everything you need done with just these two tools. Hopefully you learned something new in today's video or at least confirm you're already using the right tools. Either way, I'm really glad you joined me. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate you giving it a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch me in my next video, go ahead and hit subscribe and we'll see you then.